Yes, please. Hi, everyone. I would like to wish a very good afternoon to respected professors and all my dear friends and guests. Uh, I'm from Group 4, Sarnia Empire. The main goal of our company is just to uh, test the plastic materials. The title of the project is the mechanical and the physical properties of feedback reinforced with the hemp fiber. Next, uh, just a small introduction to my team members. She is Ketna Namuna, he is a Hitwit, and he is Sapna. Next uh, slide moving to the table of content. We're going to cover a statement of project objectives, work of interest, including relevant reasons, then outline of the workflow, troubles, and how we're going to overcome that problem, variations in the work plan, then quantitative data analysis, then the further future steps, and at the end to wrap up the whole project. Here's the statement of uh, project objective. The, the main objective of our project just to make a biodegradable, recyclable, reinforced plastic. As you all know that the use of plastic has been tremendously increased over the decade. So it's a great problem not only for the management of waste but also for the human beings as well. So I think to make a biodegradable and recyclable plastic is a good option to cure from this problem. And next is the reduce of uh, petrochemical products in the markets. And uh, the third one is the replacement of glass fiber, carbon fiber with the natural hemp fiber. Uh, the plastic that we're going to use in our daily life, it also contains the glass, fi uh, glass fiber and the carbon fiber that's also polluting the environment. So it's a good option to replace carbon fiber with the uh, natural hemp fiber. And the last one is to maintain the equality between production and the utilization rate of hemp. Uh, actually, we uh, read from some articles and research papers and we uh, we read from there like the utilization rate is very less as compared to its production rate. So here is the also good step to use the natural hemp fiber in a reinforced plastic. The, uh, next, I just uh, put some shed light on the specific object. We are going to uh, compare the young modulus of feedback with the different uh, hemp samples like 2%, 3% and 4%. And the another one is the correlation of hemp fiber concentration in feedback with the impact testing, and it helps to uh, cure. The, it helps to promote the mechanical property, one of the best mechanical property in reinforced plastic. And the last one is to observe the effect of hemp fiber concentration on the ultimate uh, tensile strength and the breaking strength. Next is the work of interest. Why we gonna choose feedback? And uh, why we gonna choose hemp fiber? These two main components, uh, these are the two main components that uh, like that's are the main components of our project. First is why feedback. The full form of feedback is polybutylene antifate uh, terrace clay and it is derived by the polycondensation reaction of BDO, PAT and AA. What is BDO, PAT and AA? BDO is butylene diol and uh, PAT is uh, polyadipate acid and the AA is adipic acid. So it's uh, all uh, done by the polycondensation reaction of these three materials. And the next is hemp fiber. Hemp is a natural fiber and it derived from the hemp as we all know that. And, and it is the one of the strongest natural fiber from the others and we uh, use the hemp fiber in our project just to uh, increase the uh, brittleness and the mechanical properties of our uh, reinforced plastic. Then the next slide I uh, just uh, hand over to my colleague Chetna. Hi everyone. My heart's beating like 60 miles an hour. So <laughs> first, <laughs> if I stutter somewhere so please bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to explain what uh, what we uh, what our procedure was and what kind of tests we did uh, in our um, project. So this is our outline of workflow. In the first month, uh, we just did the sample preparation because we had so many difficulties with the with the.
the initial uh, initial things that we had to change the uh, uh, like PA away from PVAT and then PG to uh, PVAT. So we had whole month we wasted on sample preparation. Next month we uh, <coughs> injection molding process to the February and um, half of March we did uh, the molding processes. Half of March and uh, yeah the next half of March we did uh, all the testings that is tensile infected microscopy also we did uh, DSC. We generated graphs and uh, then uh, the whatever was left of April we did uh, data analysis. So uh, just a quick major portion and minor portion. We uh, treated the hemp with alkali solution and uh, we treated hemp with just water. Alkali solution was a 0.8 NaOH solution. Hemp was extracted, uh, it was left for a day in those uh, solutions and it was extracted with the help of uh, a strainer and some utensils and vacuum filtration method. After it was extracted, it was dried in the oven for 12 hours and special thanks to Betsy that she uh, like she came to, she came on her day off to help us on that situation. Uh, after we dried it at 105 degrees Celsius, we uh, had to grind it again because it was in cluster form, cluster form, this form. So we had to um, grind it again in electrical grinders to use it uh, with the uh, PVAT. So after that, uh, hemp was taken uh, uh, on the basis of mass fraction. We uh, initially thought on that volume fraction, but we couldn't do that. So we had to uh, through, think through that again and uh, include the mass fraction uh, segment. Coupling agent that was used was triethyl and uh, officinine. So this is the injection molding uh, machine that we used. These are the uh, samples we, uh, we got. This is Sapna. <laughs> Temperature was kept at 130 degrees Celsius and um, we, the, uh, the pressure that was ideal for us was 120 uh, megapascals, but it was ranging between uh, different labs. Uh, in one lab we were getting sometimes only 80, uh, 80 megapascals, sometimes we were getting 100, sometimes we were getting 20. So that point we'll discuss today that we actually faced some difficulties on that. Weight of the mixture was 3 grams, so we, uh, we prepared 3 grams of mixture at a time and we fed that into the hopper at a time, 3 grams, and we had to, like, it was a tedious process, we have to do it again and again and again. <laughs> Tensile testing, this was the uh, testing um, machine, it was, it was manual. Uh, Tensile test, this machine gave us um, the uh, data on the base of uh, strength, yield strength, Young's modulus, uh, breaking strength. And this is the name of instrument that we used. And I just want to add the, the thing that Blessy said. It was true. This this clamp, it was kind of at fault because we also faced it sometime that this this clamp wasn't working properly. So sometimes what uh, what our sample did was, it was just coming out from that, that clamp again and again. So we had also that difficulty faced. The dimension of a sample was this. So if we imagine X, Y, and Z axis, X axis were length, and um, Y axis was width, and thickness was Z axis. So if we ima if you ima uh, imagine an X, Y, and Z axis, you can you can clearly see what uh, what our uh, measurements were like. On and we just measured like this this much of dog bone sample. And area we uh, just multiplied with the thickness, so this was the area. Impact testing, that, that was our impact testing machine, and uh, we got these um, uh, measurements on the impact testing, and we uh, tested three samples for each one of uh, each one of the group, like 2%, 3%, 1%, uh, 4%, and then only feedback. So we had to uh, do tests on three samples from mm. each group. So next slides will be discussed when. Hi everyone. So uh, 
Chetna and Sapna would we talk about the project, what we were doing on. Uh, here's the part, the difficulties during the project. This is the part that nobody will want to uh, face in their project. Uh, actually, the difficulties were a main part of our project. We, uh, like, uh, when we started with the project with the PLA and the PEG, we were not able to get what we wanted. At uh, one moment, we decided to change the whole project because uh, uh, I, I know that we were known as a PLA group and at the end of the project, there was no PLA in the whole project. We ended up with a PBEC. So the uniformness of the PLA and PEG was the main issue because uh, PLA was a pallet. Uh, PEG was uh, just like the powder of sugar and hemp was a fiber. So when we tried to insert those uh, all materials together in the uh, hopper, in the injection molder, either hemp remains in the hopper or PLA remains uh, in the hopper. So we were not able to get uh, each and every raw material in the dog bones. And uh, that was the major difficulty that we faced during the first two or three weeks of our project. Uh, pressure and temperature. So we used uh, uh, two different laboratories during the project. Uh, in the one that laboratory, as uh, uh, Chitna talked, that uh, we were not getting the pressure that uh, uh, we needed actually. Uh, we needed the 120 psi pressure uh, to make our dog bones, but we were just getting the 90, 80 to 90 uh, psi pressure in one lab, and that's why uh, we got some delay in the uh, our uh, uh, in the our work plan uh, injection molder. So the injection molder that we used was uh, not proper, I can say, uh, for our project actually. Uh, because uh, uh, we were not able to get uh, proper dog bones with the with our material what we choose or what we decided to go with uh, melting points. So in the initial stage we were doing the project with the PLA, PEG, and hemp, and uh, melting point of three uh, uh, three raw material was totally different. But uh, then we started with the PBEC, so then we figured out uh, the melting point issues. Uh, testing methods. So we used the three testing methods. Uh, in the uh, impact tester, inside tester, and microscopy, and all three testing machines, uh, we face the difficulties. If I talk about the impact tester, the impact tester that we have in our laboratory is uh, designed for the uh, cylindrical uh, shaped uh, materials. But the dog bones that we got from the injection molder was the cuboidal one. So you are not able to accommodate our sample in the, in the impact tester. If I talk about the tensile machine, we were not able to uh, get the breaking point uh, and uh, breaking point and tensile strength in the uh, application. Why? Because when when I accommodated my sample in the tensile machine, uh, the uh, sample came out. When uh, at one moment it should be uh, broken from the uh, middle part, but uh, it just came out because of the as a I think Blasi talked about the clamp that we have in the uh, tensile machine, and uh, we were we didn't get the uh, clear image in the microscopy, and the final results. Uh, the final results uh, we didn't get what we expected uh, from the uh, the data that we read or the scientific papers that we read. Uh, so the solution, how we figured out. So before talking about the solution. I would like to thank uh, my whole team because they tried uh, very hard in it and I would like to thank uh, Margaret Carter because uh, she suggested us that uh, now go with the PBAT instead of PLA. I would like to thank Betsy how she helped us during the initial part of the stage and somewhere I read that uh, one of the famous footballers said that I have never scored a goal without pass from my team member. So each and everyone uh, played a very good role during the project. Uh, solution. So the, we, then we came with the PBAT instead of PLA and P, uh, PEG. Why we use PEG? Because uh, as a plasticizer, because PLA is too brittle. But if you are going with the PBAT, then you don't need to use PEG because uh, PBAT is not that much brittle. So PBAT was the uh, uh, PBAT was a good option instead of PLA. Maintain the temperature uh, for the both the materials. When we use the PBAT, then we. Uh, we didn't face the issue of uh, melting point or the temperature because the melting point of the hemp and PBEC, I will not say equal, but they were nearby. So uh, we were able to get what we wanted, a uh, high pressure. Uh, then we decided to go uh, uh, do the, our, all the experiment in the one laboratory where we were getting the uh, enough pressure, double uh, and triple injection molding. So as I talked that we, will, uh, we didn't get the uh, proper uh, dog bones because uh, uh, we were not getting the hemp, uh, like whole uh, hemp that we wanted in the one dog bone. So what we did, we just got the uh, dog bones, then we cut it, cut them down and make the uh, like uh, uh, little uh, part of the, or I, I just say crystal, and then we uh, added them again in the hopper. Uh, so I can say it was like a double or triple injection molding. 
classic sample for the impact testing. So as I, I as I mentioned that the machine that we have is uh, made for the uh, cuboid, uh, the cylindrical shape, but uh, we cut it down and Namuna tried hard to make them uh, uh, shape, uh, to give them the shape that we wanted. Accommodate the sample properly in the tensile tester, uh, and that's why we were able to get the result in the tensile machine. So th these are the solutions that we did. Uh, changes in the plan and uh, uh, plan on the original and the reasons behind it. So as I talked that we faced a lots of difficulties in it, but I will say that we are we are not failed. We just found uh, hundred ways that will not <laughs> possible to perform the experiment, and uh, future students will not go with it. Uh, no PLA, no PEG anymore. So as I mentioned that we started with PLA PEG, but uh, we ended up with the PBET. PBET came as a replacement of the PLA, and uh, it was actually a uh, very good option to replace PLA uh, with a PBET, double and triple injection molding. So uh, we were disappointed when we got the injection uh, our dog bones because there was no hemp and uh, uh, the result that we wanted, we, we were not getting that results. But yeah, double and triple injection mold. I will not say that uh, we ended up our project with the, what we expected, but yeah, uh, the result was, was uh, satisfying. Uh, DSC took place, so there was no DSC uh, when we started the project. But the professor suggested us to, uh, uh, suggested us to go with the DSC, and uh, by doing DSC, we got to know about the phase change, uh, phase change changes, and uh, some proportion of uh, hemp in our uh, sample. So these are the difficulties and that uh, some changes in the plan that we did. the data analysis, the main main part of our project. Uh, uh, yeah, here is the quantitative data analysis, <laughs> which we did. Actually, we had done the experiment, or like we had <coughs> tested our samples uh, basically in three machines. I mean, one was tensile testing, another one impact testing, and the next was microscopy as well. And uh, yeah, at the end of the project, we we decided to work on DSC as well. So we have got some data on DSC as well. For each category, we have got we have got three samples. We had performed three samples for each category. I mean, for two percent, we had got three samples. Three percent, we had got uh, three samples, and we had run our experiment on that basis. So next slide, please. So. I am gonna um, talk about the correlation of hemp fiber with the impact strain. With uh, my friend had already described about the impact testing machine and how we got the impact strain is that the machine was giving us a PEL value um, and we divided the PEL value in June with the thickness and got this result. Uh, result where we found that the impact strength increases with the increase in hemp fiber concentration. We can clearly see here, if we increase the hemp fiber concentration, the impact strength is increasing. 4% has got, has got the highest value of impact strength, while PVAT only has got less uh, impact strength. So it suggests us that we better use hemp fiber if we want to increase the strength of the PVAT. Next, next slide please. Yeah, this one is the tensile testing graph that we got from our uh, experiment. These are, I just uh, attached the graph so that uh, it will be easier to show you, but uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> describe all of these. We do have um, many more graphs with us, but it was impossible to attach all those graphs here, so I just uh, attached only four of those for reference. Yeah, yeah. from the tensile te testing, we got the data for ultimate test tensile strength and breaking tensile strength. We thought that the ultimate tensile strength and breaking strength gets decreased with the increase in hemp fiber concentration. The more hemp fiber we added, the less, the less are the ultimate tensile strength and breaking strength. We can clearly see here, the 4% of, um, the 4% hemp fiber containing sample has got the least 
ultimate tensile strength and braking strength, while the uh, sample contains only period has got highest amount of um, ultimate tensile strength and braking strength. So, finally, what we can say from this data is it is better not to add hem fiber if we want highest uh, value of ultimate tensile strength and braking strength. Here is another graph showing correlation of Young's modulus and hand concentration using interval plot. We had done a, a one-way analysis test, test uh, using mini -dab. And what we found is that the Young's modulus surprisingly got highest at the concentration of 2% hemp fiber. And the lowest at four percent, and the medium in the me medium medium median <laughs> when it is only when it was only period. We are not sure why two percent has got highest concert, uh, highest value of Young's modulus, but yeah, what we can say is that the sample which we had um, got from Young's uh, sorry injection molding was not uniformly distributed. Mm -hmm. Some sample has got highest concentration of uh, hemp fiber, some fiber has got lowest. Even if we had mm, said that the sample is 2% or 3%, it might not have contained exact amount of hemp fiber on it. That might be the reason we had got this much of wider um, standard deviation at 2%. For the 4% value, we can say it's okay, okay, but for the 2%, there is a wide value of standard deviation. That might be the reason because of not having um, same amount of hemp fiber in the sample. And for this also, we had taken three samples and we got Young's, uh, Young's modulus value by dividing in ill strength with ill strength. This one is two key pairwise comparison of Young's modulus where we found that even uh, if in the earlier slide the value was different for 2%, 3%, 4%, what this uh, two kpr wise analysis says is that 3% and 4% shows the similarity in the variation of the um, mean of uh, their category, while 2% and 3% are different. They do not share any similar similarity in the mean of the variation. Next one, please. These are the DSC that we performed um, at the very last moment of, the, of our project. And we found out that the melting point of the previous sample was obviously 130 degrees centigrade. So most of the, all of these graph is showing a peak at 130 degrees centigrade. So we have got the um, melting point of period obviously. But unfortunately we, were, we are not able to find any peak for him fiber here in our uh, DSC graph. We can only see the peak at 4% hemp fiber at around 180 degrees centigrade, but not, none of those have contained hemp fiber in there. So this DSC is also suggesting that our sample is not containing the hemp fiber uniformly on it. So our data might have been fluctuated because of the not having uniform concentration of hemp fiber on it. This one uh, was microscopy, and we had got this kind of images with <coughs> hemp fiber and uh, without hemp fiber. Uh, we were not being able to see any uh, fiber pull out in the <coughs> microscopy, but of course our sample was brittle. That is what we got from the microscopy. Next one, please. Uh, yeah, conclusion. As I already mentioned, the Young's modulus was highest at 2% and impact strength was increasing with the concentration of the hem fiber while uh, breaking strength and ultimate tensile strength was decreasing with the uh, incre increment of the hem fiber concentration. Future work plan that 
what would we do if we had got um, more time or uh, in the future, what would we do? The first one would be the uh, more replicates of him fiber concentration in our sample. For now, we had performed our experiment only with 2%, 3%, 4% IDP value only. But if we had got more time, we would obviously go through 1% and even 0.5% uh, or more. And uh, the other one would be going with uh, DS, uh, going more deeper with DSC as well. We would go work on DSC more. And the next would be working with uh, extruder, or uh, as um, uh, Amitos said earlier, uh, they would go with micro compounder. We would also think about that to blend our sample more uniformly and got the proper sample. And go with the biodegrad biodegradability test. We, had, we haven't tested any bio biodegradability test. Even if we had said that we, uh, our main aim is to make a biodegradable plastic, we haven't done any test for biodegradability, whether it is biodegradable or not, we would go for that um, for sure if we get time. Because at this time, we had done so many tests and then analysis, so we couldn't go more than this in any way. So for sure, in future, if we get time, we'll go for biodegradability and then hardness test. This one, please. Acknowledgement. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge all of my friends, Professor Margaret, Betsy, and our <laughs> guest, and of course, my uh, team member, and my classmates. Thank you so much for helping and supporting uh, us through this project and uh, for the whole semester, so maybe a year, maybe like a, in future we may not meet like this. For Thank you so much for the support and uh, help that uh, we that we get from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Excellent. I'm just going to turn it over to Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I put you on the spot? <laughs> I, I have a question if you want me to go first. Yes. Okay. What was the intention or the purpose of your sodium hydroxide treatment uh, of the hemp at the beginning? Yeah, the main purpose of the sodium hydroxide treatment was we have um, lanins and pectins in our hemp fiber, so to remove those uh, non-cellulosic part from the hemp uh, fiber, we treated our sample with the sodium hydroxide. Okay. Which we will, yeah. And did you have an expectation of how that would affect uh, the strength? Actually, I, we forgot to mention that in our presentation. We have done um, experiment with untreated and uh, treated one, but unfortunately we couldn't get any data for uh, untre untreated one because it didn't break. And we decided not to so not to include that part in our project. Those were the ones that you treated with just water. Yeah, ah. no, they, those are treated with sodium hydroxide. The untreated one we couldn't get any data, so we haven't included those data. Okay, yet. okay, thank you. So just uh, I don't want to uh, ask you the same question. <laughs> um, so. <if> <coughs> Project 